Today we'll be taking a look at how to install white tabbed AGS 101 backlit screens into your Game Boy Advance. I'm Enoch Du and this is Retro Revive. While there are a lot of GBA backlight mod tutorials out there, it was difficult for me to find one that covers how to properly install Chinese aftermarket ones. You can tell by the white tab on the ribbon cable, as opposed to the original's brown tab. Without additional modifications or the proper Type B ribbon cable adapter, the image will look extremely washed out. If you have an original AGS-101 screen with a brown tab on the ribbon cable, you can just skip over the motherboard modification part. So without further ado, let's crack it open. The first thing you're gonna need to do is to remove the six tri-wing screws in the back of the case. There will be one more Phillips hidden in the battery compartment. With those out of the way, you can remove the back. Next, remove the two Phillips screws in the back of the motherboard. Remove the motherboard. Pop out the tabs on the side of the ribbon cable for the screen and pull it out. Next, you'll need to pry out the old screen. It has some adhesive holding it in place, so be careful not to damage it. Next thing we'll need to do is make modifications to the case that the new screen will be housed in. You'll need to cut out this trim on the bottom. While I cut out the whole thing, I would recommend just cutting out what you need so that the screen can get a secure fit. What I did is took a knife and cut each end of the trim. I then took a pair of pliers and twisted out as much plastic as I could. I then removed the excess plastic with a rotary tool. Be sure to smooth it out as best you can as this will be a very tight fit. Clean out the debris before getting started on the motherboard. If your kit came with an aftermarket screen and a Type A ribbon cable, and you're a cheap son of a gun like me, you're going to need to make additional modifications to keep your screen from looking all washed out. I highly recommend skipping this part if you don't know. This modification is less risky than other modifications out there, but while it fixed the washed out image, there's still a slight image retention problem. But it hasn't been noticeable enough for me to take the risk. And if it bothered me enough, I'd probably just buy the Type B ribbon cable adapter. All I did was use a thin wire to short Rev C to ground on the back side of the motherboard. Now it's time to install the AGS-101 screen. Attach the cable to the cable adapter with the white tab facing up. Not like I did it in this video. My bad. Don't, don't do that. Before you place in the screen, make sure to peel off the protective coating. Place the screen in the shell with the ribbon cable facing down. Tape down the adapter with the notches in the sides of the pass-through hole above the screen, with the connector facing down. Gently fold the excess cable and tape it into place. Feed the power wire up through the right side of the cable. Before you reinstall the motherboard, make sure all the buttons and rubber domes are back into place. Set the motherboard back in. You may have to wiggle it a little to get it to fall into place. Connect the ribbon cable adapter into where the original screen was connected and push the tabs back into place. Screw back in the small Phillips screws. On the right side of the motherboard, you'll see two chips with connections coming off of them shaped like Y's. You'll need to solder the power wire onto the left prong of the right Y. Be sure to tin the wire before attempting the solder as it'll make things way easier for you. Using a fine tip for your soldering iron will also make things a lot easier. Now put the plastic sides, triggers, and power switch back in before placing the back cover back on. Button it up with the six tri-wing screws and the Phillips in the battery compartment, and you're ready to go. With all that done, you should have a backlit original Game Boy Advance that isn't all washed out. In the description, I've included a link to my blog that includes a step-by-step -step guide on how to complete this mod, as well as links to any tools that I used during it. Let me know how this mod turned out for you, or if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments below.